Hello world, Shelly here, and today I've got for you my top five high-end foundations. I've got 40 plus foundation reviews on my channel at this point, and I decided to wrangle them all up, take my spreadsheet that's got all the data about what I look for in foundations and what I thought of each one I tested, pick the top five and show them to you and see where we're at as of July 2017. So that's what I have for you today. So we're going to go from fifth place up to first place and let's get started. So the first one, I actually don't have the bottle to show you because I had returned it for a different shade and I just yesterday reordered the shade that I wanted and that is the MAC Mineralize. If you recall back when I reviewed it, I did not realize that MAC's naming numbering scheme is like backwards. So I had ordered NC20 assuming that that was cool and it's not. The NWs are for cool tones and the NCs are for warm tones and I need cool toned foundations. So the NW20 was way, or NC20 was way too warm for my skin, way too yellow. So I was waiting for a plenty points deal so that I could order it at Macy's and get some points and they just ran a 5X points deal. So I have reordered it. It is my fifth place foundation, so let me tell you a little bit about it anyway. So the rating I had given it when I reviewed it was a B plus, and it retails for $38, comes in eight different shades. It's a lightweight foundation, has a very dewy finish, and that, to me, that kind of knocks it down in the ranking a little bit. I'm not a fan of a dewy finish. You can set it with powder and get rid of some of that. It's light to medium coverage, very buildable, up to eight hour wear time, so it does not have quite as good of the wear time as some of the other foundations on this list, but it is one of the best I've tried at blurring pores and blurring texture. Now, I'm 42 years old, I, my skin is starting to show texture, it is starting to have enlarged pores, I'm having trouble with my skin that I never had in the past, so I love a foundation that kind of smooths everything out and I really love MAC Mineralize for that. It very slightly settles into lines on me, but it is a hydrating foundation. I have very dry skin, so I like something that does not dry my skin out, and even better if my skin feels hydrated by the end of the day. So the MAC Mineralize, fifth place, thumbs up from me. In fourth place, this is one of my favorites. It is the Philosophy Hope in a Jar foundation. I've got this in shade three, which appears to be the lightest shade that they've got. I don't know why it's number three, but it is called Fair Light. And this got an A rating when I reviewed it on my channel. It retails for $39. It only comes in eight shades, so there's not an extensive shade range. I was very lucky. This is one of the best color matches for me, and I think I just got pretty lucky. It's a fair neutral with just a little bit of pink to it. This is a very lightweight foundation to wear. It is a satin to slightly dewy finish. It's probably as dewy as I want it to be at maximum. Light to medium coverage, very buildable, solid nine hour wear time, so you're going to get a full work day out of this. You get some slight blurring of pores and slight blurring of texture with this foundation, and it does not settle into lines on me. It does not cake up, such as around my nose, and that's important. Over time, a lot of foundations cake up on me and start to settle into my smile lines and my chin lines and my forehead lines, and I don't like that, so this foundation does not, and it is another one that feels very hydrating on the skin, so I'm a big fan of the Philosophy Hope in a Jar. I would have never even tried it, but there was a 50% off sale. I think I got it at Ulta, and I tried it, and now I'm in love, and it looks like a full jar, but I'm really about... Two, I got about two thirds left, so I've been using this one quite a bit. The first week that I wore that Hope in a Jar foundation to work, I had three different people tell me that my skin looked so nice. What are you doing? Your skin looks great. <laughs> I'm wearing this foundation. Yeah, it was good stuff. 
In third place, the foundation that I am wearing right now because it's a little teeny bit too dark on me in the winter time, so it actually turned out to be a really good color match for me now, and that is the MAC Studio Sculpt Foundation. I have this in shade NW15, which I think is probably my, my good summer shade. I could probably go a teeny bit lighter in the winter, but thoroughly enjoy this foundation. MAC, having two out of my top five, I would have never really guessed. I haven't used a lot of MAC products in the past, but their foundations really seem to work well for my skin anyway. It received an A grade when I was reviewing it, and it retails for $34, comes in 19 shades, so you have an extensive shade range. You're going to be able to find what you want. Just remember, it's the opposite of what makes sense. So NW, which you would normally think is warm, is going to be a cool tone foundation, and NC, which you might think is cool, is actually warm. If you are cool toned, you want NW. If you're warm toned, you want NC. It's backwards. I don't know why. Doesn't make sense. Just remember that it's backwards. This is a slightly lightweight foundation. It's about average weight, I would say. Maybe leaning on the lightweight side. It's still very comfortable to wear. Satin matte to a natural sort of matte finish. It's not very dewy at all, but it's not dry. It's not matte. It's a very natural. I don't have any highlighter on today and any glow you're getting is just from this foundation. So I, it's a, it's a natural satin, I would say. High, medium to full coverage in one coat. This is one coat of foundation on my face right now. And I don't see any of my freckles. I don't see any of my sunspots coming through. For me, I really love a foundation that gives good coverage with very minimal product. Because not only are you saving money on these expensive products, but you don't have to take a whole ton of time layering up your face. You keep a nice lightweight feel and you get the coverage you're looking for. So I like that. This one gives me a solid 10 plus hours of wear time. So this is a morning to night kind of wear. Excellent wear on me. Gives slight blurring of pores and it definitely helps smooth out the texture on my face, which I enjoy. It does not settle into lines. It does not cake up on me and it's a very hydrating foundation. It is probably the most hydrating feeling foundation of the five on this list. So if you have very dry skin, you might very much enjoy this. I definitely do. This is the only downside I think is it's a squeezy tube. There's no pump. So it's not as bad as just a straight up bottle, which <clears throat> you're gonna see in the next one. <clears throat> but not a pump. I prefer pumps. Squeezy tube, I'll take it. But that is the Max Studio Sculpt in third place. First and second place are pretty much in a dead heat in terms of how well I like wearing them. What really ended up outranking one from the other is the convenience in application. So number two in second place, this is one of my go-tos. It is the Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation. This is in shade 1C1 Cool Bone. It's a little too dark for me. I have heard red seen you guys have told me there is one shade lighter that can be hard to get i haven't been able to get my hands on it i don't know if you have to go straight through estee lauder or if it's like a uk release and you can order it somehow online i'm not sure i haven't investigated that yet because this isn't too dark on me so i can get away with it so i just haven't bothered but it is a foundation that i absolutely love when i reviewed it it got an a grade on my channel retails for 39.50 and it comes in 38 shades. So again, you are going to be able to find a match. The naming scheme makes sense. So C is for cool, 1C1, cool, yes. Here's the downside of this foundation. No pump, it's just a bottle. Oh my God, that drives me insane. Now, I did just find on Ulta's website that they sell a $10 pump that you can use for this bottle. I'm going to break down and buy it because it's just so messy to have to, it's just messy. I want a pump or at least a squeeze tube, but beyond the application, this foundation works really well on me. It feels very lightweight despite the excellent coverage that it gives. It's a natural satin matte finish, not too dewy. You know I'm not huge into the dewy thing. Medium to full buildable coverage. It's one of those foundations where if you put it on 
one layer with a sponge, you're gonna get a, a nice medium coverage. If you use a brush or you build it up, you're going to get all the way to full if you want to get to full coverage. Nine plus hours of wear time. Honestly, it goes morning to night on me. At, at review, I had checked it just past the nine hour mark, but I've worn it a zillion times since, and I can get a full day out of it, which is really nice not having to worry about touch-ups, not having to worry about if I'm outside, I'm sweating, or whatever's going on. If is it is it washing off my face? Is it melting off? It does not melt off the face. It is a wonderful staying power foundation. Blurs pores, smooths texture, skin looks awesome, does not settle into lines, does not cake up. Beautiful, beautiful foundation. And it feels hydrating on my face. So that's good. I like it. I like it a lot. Doesn't have a pump. Needs a pump. But great foundation. Absolutely one of my favorites. If it had a pump, we would be neck and neck here because number one, the number one foundation, which I'm not wearing now because it's too light for me this time of year, is the Hourglass Vanishing Stick Foundation. I've got this in the shade Alabaster. I love this stuff. I never in my a million years would have thought that with my dry skin I could wear a stick foundation. I just never would have imagined, but this foundation somehow manages to be hydrating even though it's in stick form. When I reviewed it, it got an A grade. Retails for $46, and that is why I have not bought the shade that works for me in the summertime, because this is super pricey. You don't get a ton of product in here. It's very expensive, but it is very beautiful. It comes in 26 shades. When I say it's very lightweight, it is almost, it's like almost nothing on your face. It is so lightweight, so comfortable, great coverage. You get high medium coverage with one layer if you're using a brush. Easy to get to full coverage without putting a ton of product on your face. So if you want that kind of coverage, if you like, I like to get rid of my freckles and my sunspots. It's so lightweight and it, the coverage is amazing. The wear time, 12 hours plus. I get a solid full day out of this foundation, which I just, I'm really amazed. I've never had a stick foundation that performs so well on my skin. It blurs pores, smooths texture, probably second place of all five of these on how well it smooths the texture of my skin. It does not settle into lines, it does not cake up, and it feels hydrating, which is, Amazing for a stick foundation. I really enjoy this. Someday, if I get a wicked good sale or something like that, I probably will go get a match for summertime because this is so, I mean, you can just pop it in a bag. It's so convenient. It's so easy. You don't have to make a mess to apply your makeup. I, I, I really, really, really love this foundation. So there you have it. Those are my top five high-end foundations of all the ones that I have reviewed on my channel. What is your favorite high-end foundation? Leave me a comment down below. If I haven't tried it out yet, I will do my best to get my hands on it and do a Friday Foundation Fix or a Foundation Fest review of it. You know I am always in search of the, the holy grail of foundations for dry, maturing, Skin with sunspots and some fine lines. You know the dealio. That's what I'm looking for. I want one that works. And of course, everybody's skin is different. And just because something works for me doesn't mean it'll work for you. And just because something doesn't work for me doesn't mean it won't work for you. Our body chemistries are all completely different. I do hope that based on the information I provide that some of this is helpful in sorting out what you might need out of a foundation. And that is why I do what I do. So thanks a lot for taking some time out of your day to geek out over makeup with me. I appreciate it, and I hope you guys all have an awesome day or night wherever you are in the world. Take care of each other. Bye-bye.